Mm -hmm. I have something to tell you. What, Sarah? We're going to have a baby. baby's asleep. Good. Would you like something to eat, son? No, thanks, Ma. Why don't you and Dad go home and get some sleep? Well, we're going to spend the night again and help you with the baby. You both need to rest. Been up for days. Pam and I will be fine. It's no problem for us to stay. I know, Dad. But we'll be fine. Ma, I'll see you in the morning. Dad, I'll be coming back to work tomorrow.
Afternoon, Christian Film Library. Hey, Harry, how you doing? Oh, doing fine, fine. The convention? Well, no, I won't be going this year. Well, the doc asked me to take it easy, you know, no traveling. Old ticker's slowing down a little bit, Harry. Wayne? Well, I'm not sure. He hasn't decided yet. I know I need to go. I just don't want to leave Pamela. Hey, your mother and I will take care of her. You have nothing to worry about. Oh, I'm not worried, Dad. Well, what is it then, son? When Pamela was born, I, I made a commitment to the Lord that I pray with her every night. So far, I've been able to keep that commitment. If I go to the convention, I don't see how I can. I see. Well, I'll pray with her. That won't be a problem. It's not that, Dad. It's just that I made the commitment, and I don't want to break it. Son, the film convention's very important. You really need to go. I know, Dad. I just want to do the right thing. Wait a minute, Wayne. I've got an idea. I think I know how you can do both. Master, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Right? Right. <laughs> Daddy, hmm? I have Jesus in my heart. Where's your heart, Pamela? Right here. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Pamela. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Say a prayer and blow out the candles. <laughs> What'd you pray for, honey? Why, now, she's not supposed to tell you that. That's a secret between her and the Lord. He's right, Ma. Sorry. What'd you pray for, Pamela? Dad! <laughs> I'm not supposed to tell you, but I will. I didn't ask for anything. I just told God how much I love my grandparents and my father. Now, isn't that nice? And Lord, thank you for our family and for this special day. Continue to guide us and teach us through your word and your spirit. In your son's precious name, amen. Amen. Thanks, Dad. You're welcome. Good night. Night, Dad. Sixteen years old. <laughs> You're becoming a beautiful young woman, just like your mother. Hey, why don't you take Mitzi? Nah, we're just friends. Besides, I went with her last year. <laughs> You've been out with every Christian girl in this world, haven't you, Jerry? <laughs> Not quite, Andy. I haven't been out with Pamela Buckland yet. <laughs> Nobody's been out with her. Nobody? She's sweet 16 and never been kissed. Never? Jerry Clark asked me out for a date today. Well, what'd you tell him? I told him I had to ask my father. Yeah, you know how I feel about dating. He just wants me to go to the game with him. It's not really a date. He's a good Christian guy, Dad. Probably the best Christian in the whole school. Mm-hmm. Hey. 
How you doing? Hi, Jerry. So what's the good news? We gonna go to the game? Um, um, Jerry, I think you're a great guy and everything, but I can't go with you. Well, why not? My father won't let me. What do you mean your father won't let you? I'm not asking you to marry me. I just want you to go to the game. I know. I'm sorry, I can't go. Look, you said I was a great guy. Let up your dad a little. Uh, I can't. He won't change his mind. <sighs> all right, I get it. I'm just not good enough for you. No, Jerry, that's not it at all. My, my father won't let me go out with anybody. I'm sorry. You don't have to make any excuses. I get the picture. Are you crazy? I'd die if he asked me out. I can't believe you said no. My father won't let me. What else was I supposed to say? What's wrong with your dad, Pam? He won't let you go out with anybody. My father lets me go out with whoever I want, as long as he's a Christian. Well, he wants me to wait for the Lord to bring the right guy along. But how are you supposed to know who the right guy is if you never go out with anybody? How am I supposed to know who the right guy is if I never go out with anybody? Pamela, who have you been talking to? doesn't make sense, Dad. I don't see why I can't go out with a guy. Nothing's going to happen. I've told you why I don't want you to date. Dad, I want to get married someday. I don't want to be single my whole life. <laughs> you just turned 16. You'll probably be married before any of your girlfriends. I doubt it. Oh, look, I know it's hard. All your friends are dating and you're not. But it's for your own protection. Just trust me. So what kind of a guy does your dad want you to marry? He wants me to marry a guy who's never kissed a girl. He what? He wants me to marry a guy who's never kissed a girl. You're kidding. Nope. Pam, your dad wants you to marry a guy who doesn't exist. He thinks he does. So why won't he let you date? He wants me to remain pure. He doesn't want me to be tempted to kiss anyone until my wedding day. Wait a minute. Your dad wants you to wait until your wedding day to kiss a guy, and he wants your husband to wait until his wedding day to kiss a girl? That's right. Jessica, please don't repeat that to anyone. Everybody thinks I'm weird enough as it is. Don't worry, I won't. Pam, I like your dad and everything, but he's living in a dream world. What's his thing about kissing? I've kissed guys before and I don't feel bad. Kissing's fun. You're really missing out. Jessica's father lets her go out with guys as long as they're Christians. I wonder what Jessica's husband would say if he knew that. What do you mean? Pamela, whenever we come to a point in our lives when we're not sure what to do, we should always look ahead and view things from that perspective. For example, in your case about dating, let's look ahead to your wedding day. You'll be getting married to the man you love with all your heart. This is the man you're going to spend the rest of your life with. Now, let's go ahead a little further to your wedding night. When you lie down on your wedding bed, what kind of a man do you want your husband to be? Do you want a man who saved all his love just for you? One who never even kissed another woman so he could share that just with you? Or do you want a man who's been with other women before? One who kissed other women and didn't wait for you? Which one would you prefer? I'd prefer the one who waited. And so would your husband. Hi, Pam. Hi, Jerry. How you doing? I'm doing okay. The game's tomorrow night, and I'm still not going with anybody. Did your father change his mind? No, he didn't. Sorry. I'd really like to go with you. Maybe we can meet and sit together, just as friends. I'd like that too. I really would, but I can't. You know, I think it's great and all you respect your father. I really do. But you're not a little girl anymore. See ya. Lots of kids are laughing at me because of your old-fashioned ways. 
There's nothing old-fashioned about purity. You can't show me one verse in the Bible where it says it's wrong to date. Pamela, what's gotten into you? Nothing. It's just I'm not a little girl anymore. I know that, but I'm still your father, and I'm responsible for your well-being. You don't trust me. That's what it is. You don't trust me. I trust you very much. Then why won't you let me go to the game with Jerry? Because it's against my better judgment. But you're making my life miserable, Dad. Don't you see that? You're making it miserable. Pamela. Pamela. Pamela? Pamela, may I come in? It's time to pray. I've already said my prayers. Good night. I've prayed with you every night since the day you were born. Good night. Pamela. Good night. Dear Lord, we love you. Thank you for this day. Please watch over Pamela. Help me to be the father you want me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Good night, Pamela. Christian Film Library, this is Wayne. Hey, Dad. Pamela, hi. Um, Dan, I'm going to the game a little early tonight, so I won't be home for supper. I've got yours ready, though. It's in the oven. All right, thanks. Who are you going with? I'm going with Jessica. Okay, be home on time. I will, Dad. Love you. Bye. Bye. I better go in from here. Is everything okay? Yeah, it's just my dad. He's a little overprotective. You understand? Yeah, but what's your hurry? It's not very late.
and like So, how was it? Jessica, why is everybody looking at me? Probably because the whole school knows about you and Jerry. So what'd you think of kissing? Did you like it? I didn't kiss him. It's not what I heard. What did you hear? Well, I heard that you and Jerry made out for a while in the living room. That's not true. Who'd you hear that from? Well, Mitzi told me, and she heard it from Andy, and he probably heard it from Jerry. Jerry's lying. He tried to kiss me, but I didn't let him. He didn't even come into my house. That's not what's going around. So... Jerry told everyone he kissed you. And he didn't, Dad. Why is he saying that? Well, first of all, maybe the Lord's trying to teach you a lesson. If you'd obeyed your father, none of this would have happened. I know. You also deceived me. You said you were going to the game with Jessica, which you did. But you met Jerry there. Now Jerry's telling everyone he went out with you, which he did. But what happened is another story. I don't know why I did it. All the other girls were going on dates and I wasn't. Pamela, I would never, ever do anything to hurt you. I love you. I know, Dad, and I'm really sorry. I'll never do anything like this again. Please forgive me. I forgive you. I love you, Dad. Love you, too. Pamela, a kiss is something you shouldn't just give away. It's very special. What does the minister say just after he's pronounced the couple husband and wife? He says... You may now kiss the bride. Please keep out any root of bitterness from springing up in our hearts. Help us not to be angry. We pray for Jerry and ask that you would work in his life. Thank you for what you're teaching us in this situation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks, Dad. You're welcome. Dad? Hmm? I never thought Jerry would spread a lie about me. No, oh, people lie to cover themselves. Maybe Jerry did some bragging to his buddies, and now he has to live up to it by lying. I don't know. What can I do? Everybody thinks I did something I didn't. You could transfer to another school. I wish. Or you could do what Jesus did. Remember when he stood in front of Pilate and they falsely accused him? He didn't say anything. Jesus didn't defend himself against the lies. And Pilate was amazed. You know why? Because he saw the humble reaction of Christ and it showed him who was really lying. Well, you could do the same. Don't say anything. Don't defend yourself. Don't get upset. Just be patient and let the Lord have control of the situation. Hi, Pam. Hi, Andy. Uh, Pam, I was just wondering if you'd like to go to the game with me this Friday night. No, I can't. But thanks anyway. Oh, are you going out with Jerry again? No, I'm not going out with Jerry. And Andy, he didn't... No, I'm not going out with anybody. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. 
Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Do you know what a Christian film library is, Frederick? Uh, it's got something to do with Christian films, right? <laughs> right. We distribute films to churches, schools, and other groups interested in spreading the gospel. My father started the library back in 1945, but he just went to be with the Lord last month. Pam has been coming in after school helping with the book work, and now I need someone to help back here with the films. The job would be every day after school for about three hours. Would that work into your schedule? Yes, sir, that'd be good. All right. Well, why don't you tell me something about yourself? Pamela says you're new in school. That's right, sir. We just moved here this summer from Seattle. Let's see. I'm a senior, and I became a Christian when I was nine years old. I've been wanting to work in a ministry, and when I saw your sign at school, it looked like a good opportunity. I don't know much about film libraries, but I'm willing to learn. I promise to work real hard and try to do the best job I can. You think you'd like to work here, Frederick? Yes, I'd like to give it a try. Ready to watch the film? No, I don't feel like it tonight. It's a new release, just came in today. Well, where's Jessica tonight? She's out with her boyfriend. Should be a great film. Why don't you watch it with me? No, thanks. Hi, Jessica. Come on in. Hi, Mr. Buckland. Is Pam home? Yeah, she's up in her room. Thanks. Jessica, are you all right? Yeah. Last night, we went out for pizza, and then we took a drive. We stopped and parked, and then we made out, and it was great. Then you said our relationship had reached a turning point and that if we really loved each other, we should... <laughs> I can't believe it happened. If I would have said no, he would have thought that I didn't love him. <laughs> oh, I should have known better after what he did to you. Dad? Mm hmm? I need to talk to you about something. What is it, Pamela? Pamela? Something bad happened to Jessica last night. What happened? Pamela? She just wanted Jerry to love her, Dad. She didn't mean for anything to happen. What are you talking about? Jessica. Went out with her boyfriend.
She came to me for help today, but I didn't know what to say. She feels so guilty. She won't forgive herself. What can I tell her? Dad, what can I tell her? The Pharisees brought a woman caught in the act of adultery to Jesus. They said, the law of Moses says to stone her. What do you say? Jesus knew what they were up to. He said, he who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. One by one they all left. Just the woman remained. Jesus said to her, did anyone condemn you? She said, no one, Lord. He said, neither do I. But then he gave her a command. Go and sin no more. Be with Jessica tonight, Lord. Comfort her, heal her, draw her close to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks, Dad. You're welcome. Good night. Good night, Dad. Pamela. Yes, Dad? You mentioned a boy's name tonight, Jerry. Is that Jerry Clark? Yes, Dad. Our record show it went out on Monday, John. Should have been there the next day. Yes, but I can't run a tracer at 6 p.m. on Friday. You needed to call me earlier, at least yesterday. Then I could have gotten another one to you. Not unless you can come down and pick one up. I'm very sorry, John. Right. What happened, Mr. Buckland? Well, Faith Community didn't get their film for tonight. They're having a big youth rally that starts at 8. It's about two hours from here. I know I shipped it out on Monday. No, it's not your fault, Frederick. Every once in a while, something like this happens. I do whatever I can to get the films there, but there's not much I can do about it tonight. It's my mother's birthday. Pamela's cooking a big dinner. In fact, I'm late now. Well, I'm uh, really sorry about the film, sir. Yeah, I am too. Look, do you mind locking up for me? No, not at all. I'll be through in about five minutes. Thanks. Have a good weekend, Frederick. You too, sir. And tell your mother happy birthday for me. Oh, thank you. I will. I got a call this morning from the pastor at Faith Community. He said you got the film there just in time. He was very thankful. That's a great thing you did, Frederick, but you didn't have to. I wanted to. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. I'll be sure to pay you for the extra hours. No, Mr. Buckland, that's not why I did it. I know, but I want to. Thanks. Pastor said four kids made a profession of faith after seeing the film. Yeah.
Frederick, hi. Hi, Mr. Buckland, how are you? I, uh, I'm sorry to come over so unexpected, but I was wondering if I could talk to you for a minute. Mr. Buckland, I'd like to start working full-time at the library, trying to help more with the ministry. I really feel like this is what the Lord wants me to do. I talked it over with my parents, but I know you have the final word. Just wanted to let you know. Well, this comes as a surprise. I was thinking that with you graduating, I'd be losing you at the end of the summer. Now you want to stay on full time. If you need time to think about it, pray about it. I understand. No, I don't need any time. Starting Monday, you're a full time employee. Really, sir? Really, sir. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh. oh, there is one other thing. I was going to take a ride over to the rock formations, and if it's okay with you and okay with Pamela, I was wondering if she'd like to come along. My grandfather used to bring my dad up here a lot when he was a little boy. He said that this was a good praying spot. He said that God cut a little hole in the rock so he could look up to heaven. <laughs> this is where my dad proposed to my mom. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. This is also where my mom told my dad she was going to have a baby, me. Pretty special place, huh? Yeah. I'm really sorry about your mother. My parents were both in their 30s when they got married. My mom was working at a church and she was returning a film to the library. That's how we met. Hmm. Pamela, if it's not too personal, uh, how did your mother die? She died the day I was born from something called amniotic fluid embolism. It's kind of complicated to explain. It's pretty rare. Hmm. I'm really sorry. It must have been tough on your dad. You'll both see her in heaven one day. Yeah. Hey, thanks for coming with me today. I hope I didn't put you on the spot back at your house. No, not at all. This has been nice. I really enjoyed myself. Oh, Frederick, hi. Hi, Mr. Buckland. How are you? Fine. How are you doing? Good, thanks. Hey, the house looks good. Thanks. Pamela's been decorating all afternoon. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think she's upstairs putting some finishing touches on Christmas tree ornaments she made. Pamela, Frederick's here. Okay, I'll be down in a few minutes. Do you want to help decorate the tree? Sure. You can start with some of these ornaments Pamela made. I put them on first. 
I try to find the best spots. <laughs> Mr. Buckland, there's something I'd like to ask you. Sure. Mr. Buckland, I'd like to ask you for your permission to marry Pamela. I love her very much, sir, and I know she's the one the Lord has for me. How do you know that, Frederick? Well, when I was younger, I told the Lord that I wanted to marry the girl that he wanted me to. So I promised him that I wouldn't kiss a girl until my wedding day. And if I did that, if I waited, He'd show me who the right girl was by bringing me someone who did the same thing. I know Pamela's that girl. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Fine. Decorations are really nice. Thanks. I'm not quite done yet. I still have a few more things I want to put up. Pamela, I was just talking with your father, and I love you very much, and I want you to be my wife. Pamela, will you marry me? Yes, I'd love to. <laughs> oh, bless you. God bless you. I love you both. Thanks, <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. like the most blessed man on earth. That's how I felt the night before I got married. I had so much joy in my heart I couldn't contain myself. That's about how I feel now. I'm very grateful for who you are, Frederick. I love you like a son, and I trust you. I know you'll take very good care of my daughter. Thank you. I will. You know, Sarah and I were married for two years before she died. But those two years have carried me the next 22. I just want to tell you, love your wife with all your heart. Cherish her. You never know when the Lord will call one of you home. Thank you. And may your presence, Lord, be very real for them all the days of their lives. Always keep them close to you and close to your word. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Thanks, Dad. You're welcome. I'm going to miss you praying for me every night. I love you very, very much. Oh, I love you very, very much. I've got something for you. Oh, it's the cross Mom wore on her wedding day. I was hoping you'd wear it tomorrow. Oh, I will. Thank you. Commit yourselves one to another and to the glory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. On this glorious day, I say first to you, Frederick, you take Pamela to be your lawful wedded wife, to love her, honor her, provide for her, and lead her always in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I do. And Pamela, you take Frederick to be your lawful wedded husband, to love him, 
care for him, respect him, and submit to his leadership in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I do. As a sign of your love and faithfulness, would you now exchange the rings you have for one another? the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the laws of the state, it gives me great joy to announce that Frederick and Pamela are now husband and wife. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Frederick, you may now kiss your word. Hello. Hi, Dad. Pamela, hello. I just wanted to give you a quick call. I I'm surprised to hear from you. Well, I wanted to talk to you for a minute. I knew you'd be going to bed soon, and, well, I just wanted to pray with you one more time. Okay. If it's all right with Frederick. It is. I'm Dad, this time. Let me pray. All right. Are you ready? Ready. Dear Lord, thank 
Thank you so much.